We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're going to go, as long as everybody's okay with it, we'll go down to new business H to start with. Everybody okay with that? Yep. All right. Jake Rust with the Hillsborough Fire Department. We are looking at putting in the new fire hall. We have uh, been working with Dietrich Construction out of Fargo. They've been doing a lot of leg work for us and have done their initial mock up. Where we are putting this or want to put it, is our question to you guys, is south of the armory on that plot of land. As you can see in the one drawing, it's on the very south, south side, facing, facing east and west. So this would be a combined fire hall and ambulance. I've been working with FM Ambulance in Sanford on putting this together. They are currently at the hospital, but running out of room and need more space also. So they very much want to get out there and get more space, so that's kind of where we're at with them. Currently, we, our building's decent, but it's not really working for us. It's not great. Um, we could definitely use more space, more usable space for training. And being with the ambulance would help us with training. Like I said, Dietrich has come up, we've met with them, They've, we've put together kind of what the ambulance needs, what we need, this kind of, uh, this isn't the for sure sketch would be, but definitely a very good start. Um, there'd be, so looking at, on the very east side would be the truck, fire truck bays. On the very west side would be three ambulance bays, and then the center would be a shared training room, bathrooms, kitchen, stuff like that. And then the second floor would be their apartment, <coughs> which involves six bedrooms, two bathrooms, uh, laundry facility, living facility, kitchen of their own for anyone who's staying on call, working the ambulance. Currently not in the sketch, but uh, we would be looking also at moving the helipad to attach to hopefully the ambulance side of it. They prefer it there, but I guess wherever it worked in the sketch. We didn't have exact measurements of what the helipad should look like. You know, Dietrich didn't want to put it in there without knowing more specifics. So where we're standing, we're not looking for money right now. We're not funding it. We're just hopefully looking to get the okay from you guys that we could continue on looking into it, um, possibly using the space. You know, as you can tell in there, it doesn't take up a huge amount of it. So you know, there would be room for, say, a pool. We know that's a hot button, you know, being very well talked about now. So. We want to be courteous of that and be willing to work with the pool committee. So.
So the fire department side would face to the south, correct? Correct, yep. The ambulance face to the west. Correct, yep. on budget we have no you know we're simply in the first phase of design you know so far FM is very happy with the two they obviously got to send up their chain of command to make sure it works with Sanford and FM they're also working on grants to hopefully especially say move the helipad that'd be a big grant opportunity maybe the building in general Sanford has a specific grant person that's working with us well, like I said, both Sanford and FM are very much on board. It'll have to come down to money too at the end of the day, but um, we want to. We need to move forward to get to that point too. So the the only two concerns, and I asked Steve to look into a little bit um, with the H2S is one. Is our infrastructure able to support it and what we're going to have to put in to get it down there? Because we may have to look at a lift station or water lines and any of those things. So mm -hmm. um, I'd like to know some of that before I made a decision. And then, secondly, um, we'd have to like to see access because we still use that space for snow. And so if Losing access in there, we need to have some way of getting getting in there because that's where we pile the majority of our snow. And then, how would that affect your guys' project too? So, those are the two things that I'm concerned about. Um, from the very south and then one going on to Aggie one so but those questions that I had can be answered and figured out as we move forward um, yeah whatever you put there I mean those questions right. need to be answered so. um, but so then the next step would be to have JR if Commission approves to do this to complete a quick claim deed, um, and I assume with the restriction on it that would say the only thing that it could be used for is a fire hall and our emergency services building. And if it was not completed, then it would be reverted back to the city. Would that be the step? I say that only with hesitation of looking at the deed that was kindly provided from the, the church here of stealing. Hmm. It's still being used for public use, I guess. I just have to see if they have a requirement of who owns the property, whether it be the fire or whether it be the city. Right. But yes, yeah, so I can look into it and do it. Hopefully it's or it's a hundred year lease or a thousand something like that, that is a possibility, yes. Because the other question I'm sure that you're going to get going through is, since you guys are not a public entity, your private fire department, is no, that we're not. It's a city fire department. It's a city department. Mm. Yeah. Right, but if it be, if it's a city fire department, then it would be under the city, so that we would need to change it. You're just asking for correct. Yeah, that'd be fine. You can just leave it in the city. Because there's 
I assume there's two separate entities. One, the city fire department, and two, the fireman group itself is not the public entity that runs it. Yeah, I mean, we, the main fire department is the city. Right. And then the only thing that's different is, is we've got a gaming side for our fundraising. That's the, the two different groups. I mean, I, it was back in the mid-90s, early 90s, Stuart Larson was asked that question, um, whether we we're a city or what we are. He said we were a city department that contracts with rural townships. <clears throat> that's the last time that we've crossed that what we are. So then, if it's the city department, then anyone need to do anything with it? Not really. It's being used with the city, though. Right. However, currently, we do own our own fire department, so yes. it does get... <laughs> See, that's <laughs> that's, that's, that's a separate nonprofit <laughs> corporation that they operate out of, so that's the question of if they have to change title or not. Either way, we can hash out the details of what need be done. Right. And that's what I mean. There's two separate... Mm. Two separate things. So, and depending on how you want to do that, because then when you want to apply for grants, the government entity is going to be the one that you'll probably get the larger funds for. Yeah. Because there used to be FEMA grants and Homeland Security grants that you could use that had larger amounts that would pay for the buildings. So maybe we need JR to do some more digging into this. As long as everybody's okay with moving forward with it. Paul's too quiet, so what are your, what are your questions, Paul? <laughs> It's 140 feet. Is that what you're showing? North and south? Am I reading that right? Uh, actually, no, that would be 220, I believe. Mm -hmm. or, what'd you say, north and south? Sorry, north and south. North and south, yeah. Yes, yep, 140. Yeah, yeah. So the building itself is 60 feet wide by 220 long. Yeah, we have, as far as the pool goes and the amenities going with it, obviously we haven't gotten to the point of where we have all that mapped out yet. We haven't gotten this far, but I, when I kind of looked at the square footage, I think I figured 200 feet, so I think we'd still have the room. Yeah, the only addition would be moving the helipad maybe, right. but that would no. just be a no. small yeah. section that, in there. That would be... It would, it would clean, clean things up yeah. at least. Yeah. It anyway, and it would, but it would more likely be like you sit on the ambulance side. So yeah. Right there, so. yeah. Just, it would just be a matter of coordinating the placement of everything. Yep. They can kind of, you know, kind of sure where everything is going to kind of fit in. And, and the only thing it's going to restrict is if there was something additional that maybe wanted to be put on in the future. But I'd rather, I think this is a better fit regardless. You know, it's a good asset to the community, you know. And, yeah, I think, you know, I think the major only other thing we look at doing when it comes to money wise, too is say the truck phase would be maybe 20 feet deeper. That would give us expansion for our future. But, you know, as it sits now, it gives us more than more room than we have now and plenty for what we probably need done. But. And, and to Levi's point, as far as the snow, there's no easy solution to that. <laughs> unless, we leave it, unless we leave that empty lot empty forever, mm -hmm. and that just... That doesn't make sense to me. Uh, well, and I think part of it is places. just an access. No, I mean, we're going to combine. There'll be less space, but part of it is just getting the truck access in there so that they can. They're not having to. You know, right now they go in off of Polish Road and then they, or the other direction, they go in one way and out the other. So, mm -hmm. as long as the, in the plans, there's access for them to get in. Mm -hmm. Because unfortunately, there's a lot of snow there in some years. <laughs> some years. So, is there anybody at this point that doesn't feel that they should move forward on this spot? So, 
then the next step would be we'll have JR doing some of the digging on that. We on what? Be good neighbors. So what? Yeah, yeah, we want to work with you guys work too. Everybody, so it's so, oh. so it's a win-win for everybody. What is your hopeful timeline on this? Like, what are you thinking? You'd I, like to have a building so we can try to. I like, mean, to be probably optimistic would be next spring you'd start building, but. Um, you know, so far the process has moved pretty quick. You know, like I said, Dietrichs have been very well, easy to work with and been willing to help us. But between us and the FM, there's a lot of details to be hammered out and price and paying for it is a big one. So um, I'd say optimistically would be spring of 25. But, right. You know. Maybe. Well, and then the other question comes if trying to find price and find it is it something that we want to bond for and put on as specials, but just then it would need to be a city I would still own building and then lease back to you or something in that aspect. So. Trying to figure out those details. I think you guys are working on some of them already, aren't you? Currently, I guess, our current plan is, you know, obviously we have money in that building. We have a little bit of money for in our accounts for a down payment or close to it. Um, obviously work with FM, we're figuring out exactly what they're paying for, it. you know, because they don't want to own a building. They want to rent a building or lease it. So we would be the owners, they would pay rent. So that's a big factor in the two that they're essentially helping us build this without owning any of it. But before we get too far and you get too much into Dietrichs, we'd probably have to get architect and engineering if we were going to bond it. So, yeah, so the process they explained to us, and we're not tied to them one bit. We haven't owed them, we haven't paid them anything, they haven't charged us anything. So they're helping us get the design put together and a preliminary budget put together. And then from there, they send it to architects here to make sure everything's working, you know, there's no issues with it. And then from there, we will purchase plans from them, pay for those fees, pay for their time, and then we can do a bidding process from there. So that's kind of how um, we've dealt with it so far, and how they they talked about dealing with it. So maybe one of the next steps would be, I know Dave's on as liaison between, but being that he's stepping down in June, should we have somebody else that's going to be around so that the process keeps moving forward, whether Nicole or Jason or Paul or myself would be on there just as you guys work through this to get through some of that so that we are just so that they're in the loop as well with, yeah, I don't have a problem. You're, you're more or less like just looking to see if this is even an option, aren't you? That you're just kind of yeah, I mean, logistics we need to all be worked out yet. But yeah, you don't want to go ahead with all the logistics if you're not going to be able to use it. Correct, yeah. And so, like I said, Dietrich's standpoint, they want us to get kind of permission from you guys and even FM, you know, they, all of us, we just want permission that you guys know what we're looking at doing. And we know that this is an option because right. if it's not, then we may be. Because you don't want to go through all the work and everything, exactly. and then, then you then come here and they say, no, you can't have it. Yeah, there's no use spending money on architects and engineers when... At least in that location. Yeah, exactly, so... Right. But I think having another liaison in there to help as you guys move forward, because none of us are, the way it sounds, are going to be against it. Yeah. But we don't want to start paperwork and do it so that there's an agreement when we're going to have to go back and change it two months down the road. Mm -hmm. Do it if you want it. Yep. Is everybody okay with that? Yep. Okay. Fine. Anything else from the commission? Anything else? No. Nope. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Good work. Well, you guys are here because it was on my list that we should work on. Jamie kind of alluded to it last time is that um, I don't know if you guys had a chance or not to look at what one, what 
what you guys would like budgeted in the future, if that still is enough, and then two, um, the salaries for the fire chief assistants and secretary treasurer. Yeah, when we were looking at July, what did John was up here? Right. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that you guys, since you're all yeah. here. That yeah. And if it's something on those salaries, it could be something that we could look at this year, even not necessarily the 10000 but the salary side of it we could look at. Okay. We, can, we can come up with something that's so we're right in the middle of regular bylaws and Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll go back into the agenda. The minutes from the previous meeting. Motion to approve. What's that? I don't know. Wait, who's that? Where you guys? Countrywide. Countrywide. Would you like to move them up as well? We should, unless they want to stay here for two hours. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll allow Countrywide if you guys want to come up. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Nice to see you again, Casey. Nice you too. To see you nice to see you. Yes. My name's uh, Cole. I'm with Countrywide Sanitation. This is, uh, Rachel Granovich, uh, owner the Rachel. owner of Countrywide Sanitation. Nice to meet you all. So we had uh, um, visited with uh, Dave and Casey and Jim about a month and a half ago about looking at the new contract uh, coming into 2020, at the end of 2024, and the possibility with working with our company mm -hmm. in, into the future and um, looking at a long-term relationship with the city of Hillsboro. Um, essentially, we discussed our company capabilities and what um, we do for various size communities, small and right. large, and um, I think the city of Hillsboro would be a really good fit with our with where we're at, we're in the community already with uh, American Crystal Sugar, and we go further down the road to other communities. And yeah, a little a little history of, uh, of the company uh, Countrywide um, uh, has been in business since 2008. But prior to that, I've had um, 35 plus years of experience in garbage hauling and recycling. Um, my dad used to own Burns Refuse Service. Uh, many years ago and um, he ended up getting out of his business when I was pretty young. Uh, I ran a street sweeping business for 12 years and then I started countrywide um, sanitation, countrywide moving and storage. So um, we, we've been hauling for, for various communities. We do a lot of municipal hauling, heavy industrial hauling, um, commercial, residential, um, uh, curbside for, for that. Um, um, During this last year period, uh, you're going on, um, I believe, three communities that are at the 10-year renewal yeah. marks. You yes. know, mm -hmm. communities are happy with the service and sticking with us, and we've been adding more communities as well. I think we have a total of about 30, 30 truck fleet, um, consisting of side load, rear load, front load. Roll off, and then we also have a heavy industrial landfill as well that accepts C and D asbestos and contaminated soil, um, which we had that state certified about three years ago. So, yep, our whole operation currently runs out of Grand Forks, so we're just up the highway from you guys. And, yep. um, all of our, all of our administrative, all of our phone calls, everything answered by people in Grand Forks in the community and. Mm -hmm. We're very tied in with the Red River Valley. Um, just to give an example, like even in the last um, last year, I think we brought on three trucks. You know, so our, our trucks are relatively new. Um, they're all white. Um, we take good pride in our trucks. Or like I said, they're they're in pretty good shape. Um, we're always looking at um, nicer trucks and newer trucks. Um, 
Yeah, some of the, for an example, our front load driver um, used to work for my dad. He, he, he worked with waste management, and now he's back working with us. Steve um, runs our whole front load. Um, he had uh, hauled actually the city of uh, Hillsboro for about <laughs> 10 years. Yeah. It was until this last year when he came and worked for us. Right. So we're, right. we're very, we're, yeah. we've, we've got the Jerry's back working with us, so he worked with my dad. So mm -hmm. anyway, when my dad decided to get out of the business, he was at retirement mm -hmm. age. I was very young, uh, wasn't ready to take on that responsibility. And he didn't sell the waste management, waste management, but the business that he sold to me. So, um, yeah. I'll, so I'll anyway, be, we. How big are your trucks? Uh, well, they're 30, 30 cubic yard, uh, 28, um, you know, triaxle. We have, yeah, trucks that go from the 32 cubic yards all the way down to the smallest one. Uh, our mini bandit, the yeah. Mini bandit, yeah, 15 yard. 15 yard truck, yeah. so. Um, we, uh, we bought the first mini, mini bandit from PacTech in the state of North Dakota. We painted it pink. We're pretty proud of it. It's a non-CDL driver truck. <laughs> However, um, CDL drivers are still driving it. We bought it because it, subs it, it picks up the smaller towns, so we're not bringing in these big, huge trucks, you know, to get the towns done. So um, we haul garbage all the way to the Canadian border, which is Pembina. We go to Pembina, Drayton, um, recycling for Gilby, uh, and then moving into Grand Forks, East Grand Forks. We do the whole community. We are now negotiating our third five-year contract with the city of East Grand Forks. And moving west is Laramore, North Dakota, which we just um, signed our third five-year contract. Uh, and then our new t communities are up to um, uh, Northwood. We do Northwood, and then uh, as further south, we do Grand in North Dakota. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we just we just thought we we'd come to the council and ask for the opportunity to turn in a bid, um, primarily because it'd be a really good fit for us. Um, if we do, uh, if we do uh, work out something with the city, um, any type of equipment or containers or carts would all come in brand new. They wouldn't be used or old. Um, typically, our color is beige uh, with black lids, bl uh, brown with black lids, um, or our recycling containers are brown with green lids. Mm -hmm. And that's including the garbage site because we own our own containers on the garbage side. Sure. So, so, and we can work around that too if the city wants to continue to own those carts or if they would like to get out of that. Totally up to what the city wants to do on that. We're certainly open to either option. Yeah. Um, and I know that there's been some conversations about um, about how the bill or how the billing and container sizes and whatnot would be a really good opportunity for the city to start with a fresh slate. With mm -hmm. and I know there's some changes within public works and really just hit the ground running with a fresh slate, fresh containers, and um, we can do real competitive pricing. Um, I also didn't mention we also service the Grand Forks Air Force Base along with the Cavalier Air Station as well, and I think um, Cavalier Air Station is going on its Third, third, five-year five year contract. Mm -hmm. so. How do you do the recycling? Is it just one bin and you put so, everything in? Right. Yep. So it's single sort recycling, and we have a facility in Grand Forks where we also have a cardboard recycling route where we do the fibers, mm -hmm. um, and um, our recycling is bailed up and then exported to um, recycling plants to be processed. Yep. Um, uh, our materials go north. They go into Canada. They don't. They don't. They don't stay. They, they go out of state, right. out of country. Right. And our fibers go into Minnesota. Minnesota. So. Yep. Yeah. And anybody interested in seeing it, we'd love to show the facility. So the sure. trucks well, tip right, in, free right on the floor. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I, I don't know if we discussed too much. We have uh, um, really the largest component of our business too. Not it's not just the front load and commercial. We do a lot of roll off work, and I understand the city has the cleanups and the roll offs and whatnot. That's a very big component of our business, and we um, are yeah. in Hillsboro at least. 
twice a week, right. if not three times a week with the factory. We, we service American Crystal Sugar factories, Drayton, East Grand Forks, Crookston, and Hillsboro. And we've serviced them for a lot of years. Uh, the, um, I think the first year I got into business, they were probably, I started with East Grand Forks. So I kind of got a bizarre question because it's part of recycling, but do you guys ever do where they have like the national drop-off day for um, technology equipment or shredding or anything? Like, do you guys do any form of that as well? No, it's a weird question. No. Um, so we have resources for the city to to sign up for that um, because it, that that would just I mean it's just it's. It's taking the middleman. Like we would be that middle person, but there there are places in Bismarck and, and that you can call. Mm -hmm. okay. And if that's something that the city would be interested in doing, some sort of a campaign or something once a mm -hmm. year, we're open to having that. Discussion. And I think they charge by the pound. Yeah. You know, and then that's they usually have a, then they have a, a certain collection day that you want. That right. Um, yeah, it's yeah. a one and done pick right. thing. Yeah. Yeah. If it's yeah. something you're looking at offering the residents, we can help organize it essentially. It's not something we do every day, but right. we can take the lead on organizing it. Is right. well, I was just curious how many laptops might be stacked in people's homes for the years <laughs> and yeah. what to do with those. So right. mm -hmm. it's one of those questions where is yeah. it, you know, citywide cleanup is different than technological right. items. No, it's so a good I just it's a good question, Nicole, because yeah, it's it's yeah. really more and more now yeah. in the future. There's people got old pieces of or pieces of Technology sitting at home that they don't know what to do with. So yeah, it's getting more and more of a city service that's offered, especially in yeah. bigger communities. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You did an assessment of the town. We we, we haven't, but okay, we would I be thought, absolutely okay. willing I thought to. You had, it. So. No, no, okay. but we we certainly can, and um, and actually partially too, we could discuss with previous driver who's done it too for many years on upsizing, downsizing, where there's opportunity for some of the businesses that have to right size so we're not dumping air, essentially, right. so they get the correct well, containers. Could you just uh, explain a little bit, with because the city north of Northwood has done their garbage for years, what you did, Cole, what we did with their yeah. commercials? Yeah, so we, we um, the city of Northwood had their own truck and their city employees that did the garbage they had all they did it all with rear loads and they had a multi-day route where they were dumping containers three to four times a week in some cases um, I went with, um, with some of the city staff business to business met with each one and we got the containers right sized mm -hmm. and there was only about six or seven out of 70 businesses that ended up even having to adjust from that from that audit essentially when we were you know a little bit further along in the process but it's certainly something that we can we can do beforehand if that's something to save right. like i think uh, before we talked about having somebody else at least get bids on it We're open to the idea. Great. It would probably help if you did an assessment on it. And yeah, it would. Got that completed. Mm -hmm. I think we have a pretty good understanding where the city is at, generally speaking, on the residential homes, but for the business commercial side, mm -hmm. um, we can do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So Absolutely. Our current one ends in November, is that right? November. Yep. So if we ask for bids from you guys and if we put it out on bids for everything to be in by September 1, would that be enough time or anything? August 1? Would we have to coincide with the budget or yes. what would that work? But even if the contract's done in November, we'd have to... You can still adjust rates as necessary. As can this. you? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, typically, it, it's for a word on a bed. Um, it's nice to have about a 90 day notice. Um, no? Yeah, yeah. Some well, we can do 60 days if we were, if we were awarded the bid. Um, 
We just, uh, just because of the simple fact of, of making sure we have enough carts and, and on, on staff and um, just lining things up is always just a good thing. But so and we could do it in six That's days. That's where your assessment would come into play, basically. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just, just for a point of clarity, I do believe the city owns all of the carts. Right Except for the, the, the front recycling. Recycling. Oh, okay. So we own the front one. But all the residential totes, I believe, the next six yeah, homes yes. are city owned. Yeah, right. I think the bigger thing is the um, the commercial commercial, commercial containers. Um, mm -hmm. There, there's a depending on how many are being bought and sold, there can be between a thirty and forty five day lead time. So mm -hmm. we just want Correct. to make sure we have enough time because we'd be buying all brand new ones. Yeah, and I I know we'd have we'd have carts and containers within sixty days. That's yeah. that's not a problem. Mm -hmm. So if we, we could say July 1, and that way we, uh, if we could award it in our, our, actually not July 1, it'd be July. So what typically what you'd like us to do is come in and assess every business and every, every size of a container. Whatever you would need to do yep. to put yep. in a bid, an accurate bid for us, okay. too, because um, I assume that we would... Ask waste management again as our current provider to submit a bid um, for our July 8th meeting. So July 8th would be okay. if that works for everybody. And you then want us to have the bid in by July 8th? Okay. Yeah. I was going to say July 1st. July, July 1st is your first meeting of the month, right? Oh, yeah, it is. Never yep. mind. So, sorry, July 1st. Okay. Yep. So it need to be in by, um, we'll just say 8 a.m. on July 1st. Okay. Yeah, and I did provide a little example of a um, like an RFP type type document that essentially allows the city to spell out what the city is looking for, and I can help with getting container sizes and whatnot. But spell out what type of service, or if there's changes that the city wants in the new contract, and. Um. Also, in that RFP, it's always nice to say, is there any community give back? Are you willing to provide any, any give back, any sponsorships to any certain things, or um, any services to city buildings? Like, what, what would that include? Um, so, like, for instance, um, we donate to the Northwood um, Hockey. Um, I can't remember off my head what it is, but we, we provide a $500 thing to that every year. Um, and then we do give some city services for free. So we do provide some perks. It seems to be very helpful to be a participant in the community. Been doing it for a little while. <laughs> okay. I've been thinking about building a pool. You know, I mean, like donations. $10,000 a year. $10,000 a year is a pool fund. <laughs> The day, yeah, like I said, it, I think the one thing that we do is pr pr we do pride ourselves on service. Um, you know, that would be one of the... the and if anybody reason. wants any um, references. references from any of our other communities... Or if you know any other auditors in the community or uh, councilmen. Mm -hmm. yeah. You do Laramore, people. We do. Okay, yes. yeah, we do Laramore. Laramore, yeah. yeah. Um, so then... To make it official, do I have a motion to open up bids for garbage services for the city of Hillsville starting November 1, 2024, for a five year contract? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Moved by Dave, seconded by Jason. Is there any other discussion? Nicole? Yes. Paul? Yes. Jason? Yes. Dave? Yes. Me, yes for me. Motion carries. Um, Casey in the office will work on getting that published in the RFP so that. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you, guys. Yes. Good to see yeah. you guys. Yes. Yes. Thank you for coming. See you later. Appreciate it. Okay. I'm so bad at directions. It's like down. Well, we might as well let Steve go on too if he wants. <laughs> I don't have to wait two hours. Yeah. No, well, you've already been here for a while, so. Uh, well, Steve's coming up. 
will say that we went, him and I went over to talk to the two individuals, uh, property owners at Loyal Avenue. One of them was able to make it. The other one was busy, was called in. Steve was with his money today. He, he uh, found that, that we already have an easement for that. So that's already in place. Um, we'll just work with them to get more details. And, um, I still have to work with one of the other. Oh, over here. I said Swale on Loyal Avenue. There's an existing 20 foot drainage easement that goes between the two lots that was uh, granted shortly after the plat was recorded in 70 something ish. 77, I think it was. So that gives us 20 feet to work in. So we need to work with the landowners to keep them engaged in it. I got four documents here for the uh, water and sewer project. Um, one of them is a contract change order. We're gonna what we're gonna do is we set the substantial completion is and the uh, final completion to the final completion is set to June 15, 2024. All the work is done. Pipes are in the ground. Everything's built. Um, next spring, we just want to see what everything looks like and finish the cleanup and the seeding process at that time. Um, there's a little bit of dirt on the levees they need to clean off. And so mainly, the only thing for extending it out into the summer is just for final completion, making sure they restore everything properly. So I got a document for that to sign. Um, and we have a uh, pay app to sign for the city contractors pay app. They're uh, up to another $90,000 and then we're retaining 10% um, and um, retaining the clean it, clean up for that. So we'll hold that until next summer when they finish the project. And the other document is for um, to go to EDC, um, USDA for a reimbursement from the grant, which will be $90,000 for the contractor. And then there's roughly $150,000 in engineering fees that you guys have paid. We'll submit our receipts for that, and then you guys can get that $150 back and reimburse your um, water and sewer account with that. So that'd be a reimbursement. So if you didn't know that money was coming back, then what amount is coming back? What's that? What amount is coming back? One hundred fifty thousand. Okay. It's Where's the it? it's the money you paid for engineering because we start you start paying engineering before we got the grant in place. Okay. So then all that money that's been paid in engineering so far will get reimbursed from the grant, so that'll all come back to the water and sewer account. Low time. <laughs> it wasn't guaranteed. Remember that. We're just waiting to make sure you kept me on that long. <laughs> Um, so I see the, so I see this one here, maybe I'm skipping here. You haven't done the water main replacement part yet, right? That's done. Okay, so can you tell me kind of what these numbers mean on it that comes out to that balance to finish plus retainage? The balance to finish is 68000 Yeah. Yes, we started out with a contract of uh, 950000 and then um, we're retaining 5%, I guess, so that's 46000 And the amount eligible to date, that 888000 that was the amount eligible for um, payment minus the Retainage came to that 700, Okay. That's previous payments, and then the balance due to this application is ninety thousand dollars. So the balance to finish is that sixty-eight thousand. Okay. So everything else has been paid. Yep. Basically. The water, the water lines in. All the sewer lines are in. Um, manholes are all set. Um, we walked through the site uh, last year. There's a couple valves that needed adjusting, and they've adjusted them. 
Um, we might need to add some gravel to the where the lift station approach is on uh, on the highway there, Highway 81, where they kind of dug that up, and he said he'd put more gravel on next spring if needed. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So I saw the fourth document is just saying that we, they've reached substantial completion on the project. Substantial completion, contractor's application for payment, the estimate of funds to the USDA, and um, change order for the substantial completion, or the final completion date. If I get a motion for all four of them, it would be great. I have a motion to approve. Yep, that's the money that we're requesting from the USDA for. Which would be what we're paying Breidenbach plus what we're taking. Breidenbach will get the 90000 and then the 150000 is to come back to reimburse your comb. Gotcha. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I can second that. Moved by Jason, second by Paul to approve the off on all the payoffs. Is there any discussion? Dave? Yes. Jason? Yes. Paul? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Any yes for me? Motion carries. Okay, thanks. I'll have Levi sign these. And then uh, uh, the only other thing that's not necessarily on my agenda, but it's uh, KLJ's bridge project. Um, we'll, just have, we'll just have to check with them to make sure they're, see if they're replacing that storm sewer. Right. Um, and I can't, so we just have to have everything in by 226. So. What kind of things are they looking for from us? What concerns? This is just a notification that they're going to be doing the work and that uh, um, they might be um, interfering with some of the city utilities that go through there and placing curb and gutter. and, and uh, they just wanted the city to reply back if there's any issues that they may you may see. Is there any? Um, there's a storm sewer pipe that goes underneath the bridge right now, and that was a 36 inch storm sewer. And in our master plan for the new storm sewer project, if we went with uh, the pipelines that where we put the really big storm sewers in, and didn't use any ponding and stuff, we were upsizing that pipe to a 42 inch, which is only six inches bigger than the existing 36. So I'd like you to recommend uh, if if they're replacing that storm sewer pipe to put in a 42 instead of a 36. So it'd be basically pretty much the same configuration to come out the same. They, well, I don't know, if they're, they, move. they might have to move it because they're straightening the bridge out. Right now the bridge is curves. Yeah. So they're going to straighten the bridge out and that might mean the end of the storm pipe might have to move. I haven't seen the plans, but if they're moving the end of the pipe to get it out from underneath the bridge, then they'd have to replace it, and we'd like to have it upsized. What are they saying about the lift station there? Anything? Or they is, didn't, is that going to be a... They didn't say anything about it. Well, there's, oh, that lift station. No, they didn't. There's one on either side, isn't there? Is it? Yeah. It was a pretty generic uh, letter that didn't really say well, what they're doing. Just asked if we had any issues that they wanted us to... Okay. Address. So I'll prefer if you guys approve to allow to go to the 42 inch and then have Steve put anything else in the letter that may concern our concerns instead of me trying to put it together. That's your recommendation, 42? Yep. Okay. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Do I have a motion for that? I'll make a motion. Moved by Dave. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Paul. Any other discussion? Nicole? Yes. Dave? Yes. Jason? Yes. Paul? Yes. And a yes for me. Motion carries. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, I'm going to sign these quick. I tap them all for you. Yeah, I think he was surprised when he came to Jim Mentz out there this summer and he didn't realize that there was these lift stations in the morning. So, so, well, we'll see. Yeah, they didn't. I mean, it just said city utilities that they're going 
going to be interfering with it. You may be interfering with it. it didn't have any detail yet. And some of that, the letter is kind of generic where when they when you start a project, you have to do an environmental study and a, a, a stormwater study. And you know, they got to do these different studies where they have to reach out to all the government entities around and see if they have any input. And this could just be a letter for that, too, that they just ask for input and uh, to like, start applying for the grants or something. It's probably more of that than actually diving into the design. But if we let them know ahead of time now what that one fight we should do. Don't kill five dinosaur points. Thanks. Thank you. Do we need to do anything on this with the parent? The stormwater stuff? Or do we need them for that? We can talk about that too, yeah. Um, we haven't went too far on it. I did ask Steve to look at a little bit some of the alternatives on the stormwater for over at the county surge pond um, to see what some of the price differences would be. There is another alternative that we looked at. Um, if we want to go underground, we would have to do it in the street, or we could do it in the street instead of in their property where we put basically culverts underneath the road is another alternative but obviously that's going to put a higher price tag on because that's going to take full depth repair of the street in order to put that in and put put an underground storage in um takes a lot more pipe than you than you imagine when you when you see an open open ditch the open ditch holds a lot of water um even though it looks like uh, you can throw a few pipes in and it would be the same it's we didn't do the calculation yet that on um, what how much underground storage would be to, to simulate that um, above ground storm pond. And what would you use? Would you use corrugated or would you use plastic or would you use concrete? <laughs> um, the ones we've used in the past have been the plastic ones and they're just a half moon shape and then you fill the whole bottom dead with uh, rock and then you set them down and that way some of the some of the water and the soils inside it's filter out the bottom and then it's also used for uh helps clean the water too um we haven't put any corrugated ones in that i've known but well my question i just i know how corrugated works just use as a culvert you know as far you know having to re-dig it again once they rust out so yeah, so plastic. That plastic with the gravel sounds. It makes sense to me. If that was yeah. something. Yeah, the ones we've done, they're just they're just big half moon shape, and then gravel under. Then you you fill them with gravel so far for mm -hmm. strength, and then. You're talking the street that runs north and south by the bank. Is that the street you put them on? Well, we'd have to figure there. They have to figure out how much space we need first, and then we got to figure out where utilities are at and all the other things. So if it would even work. So that's what they're, Steve's yeah. kind of looking at now, which it'll take a little bit of time. So. That'll be one of the cost estimates in there on what that is going to be. So then we can go to the county and say, this is what it's going to cost the differences. Mm -hmm. Based on it, this is what the specials would be. And then as far as over on Loyal Avenue? On Loyal Avenue, um, Mike seemed pretty receptive to it tonight. We just need to, Tim had an emergency, so he, we didn't meet with him, and we'll try to connect with him, and then I told Mike that he didn't need to make a decision right then and there, um, and we'll kind of move forward and see how they're feeling, and if we need to meet with him again, and kind of go from there. And how about the southwest side? We haven't even tackled that one. I was trying to get one done before I moved on to the next one. Um, I talked to, I mentioned it to Steve, but you know, with the fire department coming in, that would be another thing that we could look at on the southwest side, going to the landowner and asking about dumping on that side too. Hopefully that would, could alleviate some of that snow. Um, but I wanted to finish one before I moved on to the next one. Well, there actually was a, somewhat of a ditch there before the houses were built several years ago. 
years ago that ran from because Laurel Avenue was dead ended there, and there used to be a drain that would drain off to the south. I think Rick Nelson had told me one time when we were talking about the water stuff that when he was across the street, there was a ditch, and then yeah. it got filled in got over filled time. Yeah. And that's obviously why the easement is there. So. Um. <laughs> But it's not, that's the easement and stuff. Uh, <clears throat> there was two plans that we kind of said for, or that Steve came up with. One was only six inches that we, our, one was at the curb and then one was six inch above the curb. And then it would drain, one would have less um, impact. impact to their properties. And so, that would be probably the alternative that I would push you guys to go for is the less impact to them so they're not. Um, and there's also a couple other ish things that we can work on there. One that there's the man, one of the manholes is covered up with dirt. So if we can get access back to that, that would help alleviate some of the water as well. There's two, two curb inlets and then there's a third manhole that's underneath the dirt. And if we, took the dirt off the top of that and put an area inlet on it so that um, some storm water would go in there. I think that would help because the pipe going to the lift station is a 15 inch and you got a 12 inch coming in so the more grates we have open, the better it will get the water to the lift station. And then the other one, the grating from, we looked at grating from the top of the curb down to the bottom of the ditch. And when I did that, there was uh, like between the houses, like a foot and a half of cut and back in the um, back by the fence in the back and the end of the yard it was like like two and a half feet of cut and so what I did was uh, if we go from the top of curb and then go up to the middle of the houses at six inches and then go back down we're only cutting between the houses like uh, eight inches and that way um, when the road gets six inches over the curb then it'll spill out but we're saving like uh, a foot between the houses that we don't have to cut out. So it's less impact and it'll still serve a good purpose. And when the water gets high enough, it'll go out. That's not a deep enough duct so they can slope and still mow if they. Yeah, that way we're not cutting so deep, they can still, less impact to the, to the yards and the trees and everything else out there. And the ditch can handle all that going east, I'm assuming, or where does it go? Yep. Yeah, it goes east and then it comes, turns the corner by Mike Crest and comes right on the east side of our place. And I've seen a lot of water go through there and it's never, it's never got, you know, where it's going to flood the yards. And which, when you think about the whole master plan as it goes in, you're gonna, we're going to add the retaining pod on this side, which help back some of it up. So it's, it's all going to work together to help with the issues, I assume. Yep. And, and the only other thing that I mentioned to him was that, you know, I would push that you guys, that we would pick, cover that cost of whatever we're putting in at this point, even though it was in there before, uh, we cover it and make sure that it doesn't get covered up again. It depend on the cost. <laughs> And then one other thing that we're working on now is, or A2S is working on, is the uh, uh, lead pipe inventory. Um, we're working on getting all the letters put together and, and the documents for that. There's going to be uh, um, a lot of um, well, mass media stuff sent out. It's going to be on the website, the Facebook page. Um, there'll be a notes put in the um, on the bill. The, the water bills that go out, and what the uh, what we're trying to do is get an inventory on who has lead pipes in town. It's a state requirement that everything has to be inventoried by I think it's next November. So we're in the process of that. There'll be letters that go out, and there's going to be uh, um, it's going to come with examples on how to test your um, test your pipe to see if you have lead or not. And it's actually an app that goes on your phone or your iPad, and you can just uh, It'll go through and it'll ask you questions, you know, is your pipe this color, is it this color, and if you scratch it, what color is it, you know, when you answer these questions, at the end you take a picture of the, of the pipe and submit it, so um, 
then all that data or all that information just gets collected and we'll um, be able to complete our inventory. And then in the once we get this inventory in the future, there's going to be hopefully some money coming down from the feds or somebody that'll uh, um, do a replacement project for replacing lead pipes. But that's still out there. They're still trying to find out how big this inventory is statewide. And then uh, we'll go from there. So um, we'll keep you informed before anything goes out. I don't think anything was going to go out shortly, was it? Nicole, do you remember? So we've got an anticipated time, two to three weeks survey at the end of February. Use March for gathering the surveys. Keep it open for a month. Um, and then a letter will go out with the City of Hillsborough letterhead asking them to take this survey. So there are some directions on it. Um, so this was a meeting I attended um, with AE2S and Jim and John, I believe, were also on the call. And so this survey will, like you said, have to be taken with a cell phone tablet. So if you have that kind of usage, um, they would just ask, I believe, you know, city member or somebody to help them get that inventory in for that. So I did actually print off that meeting of the LCRR, and so uh, I put it over there for them to kind of take a look at what that actually means. Um, but Hoping to have it. it. Looks like there's an LCRI. I can't remember what that means, but it's hoping to be finalized by October. Um, but that all depends. I think that's all I have for my notes, too. But it's just to have the residents be aware that there is going to be survey requests coming out for this, as that is something that um, AE2S was told to do. So. <laughs> And didn't have anything to do with us, but um, they're kind of the lead on it for getting this inventory and surveying so that we can replace all those that are required. That makes sense. So this inventory, it's no cost to the city. It's uh, the state's paying, picking up the bill on it. Um, we just, except for your assistance with, um, Casey's gave us some information and we'll need some staff help here and there to keep everything rolling. Job yep. So unfortunately, what happened was uh, two years ago when we started looking at this, or was it three years ago now? The state said we were gonna um, we could start doing the inventory, and they would once they got the whole thing in place, they would uh, reimburse everybody for the their existing time. And then the last ruling before they sent this out is. Um, they're not going to reimburse for any of the previous work, and then they have all these required. You know, they finally set up the requirements and stipulations on how the whole program is going to work. So, unfortunately, the city is not going to get reimbursed for the time that John put into it. Um, but it's good information, and we'll be able to use that when we, because we got to figure out if all the actual pipes are lead or not too. And we're going through a bunch of uh, record drawings utility record drawings when pipes are installed. So these are the pipes that are coming up to the bottom meter then? Or yeah. How, how are you checking them once they're in the ground? There's, there's two, two different ones. There's, um, there's the check, you check them in, the, the homeowners are going to check them in their house when it comes into the house. Yeah. And then... And that's what the app is for then? Yep. That part? Okay. And then there's other ones where we're losing potholing and check um, services on the other side of the meter. Depending on when the house was built and um, if we didn't have any other information on it. Because if they were built after a certain date, lead pipe wasn't used anymore. So it's if they were built before this date and we didn't have any information that they'd been replaced and they'd be potholing and checking the services on the street side. So, no, so do we have possible, do we have lead pipes in, in the streets and everything to do that? The majority of that has been re replaced because in 66 the city had a water main replacement project and uh, they replaced all the lead pipes and services at that time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, but, I can't, but I can't find the plans. Do you find them? <laughs> we got a lot more digging. I don't think that was ever done. I don't know. We scratched. I think it's just speculation. <laughs> I had to do it at our farmyard, and it was pretty easy. So, 
even though I knew there was no lead pipe, it was just put in last spring. So. Yeah. I'm looking at some way to go ahead and take it underneath. Where they can get everything underneath. Yeah. Then they, then they gotta fix it on top. <laughs> they probably wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that should be all I have, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, thanks for moving me up on the agenda. Thank you, thank you. All right, uh, we'll go back to the minutes from the last meeting. There's a motion to approve those. I'll make the motion. Moved by Dave, is there a second? I'll second. Second by Nicole. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Next item is presentation of the bills. There is one change. The bill that was going to be, they were going to pay for everything, but it wasn't that much. It was 107 something. So that one has changed and they'll rewrite the check. So it's not 275, it's 107. Is that on the AP25 that you're supposed to know? Yeah. Okay. It was the, we had to order another jacket for Jim. Oh, gotcha. Do I have a motion to approve the bills with that change? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Moved by Nicole, second by Jason to approve the bills with the change. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Commissioners will part. We'll start with Jason. I have nothing. Paul? The only thing I have is that we are getting closer to load controls. We have the Miller Electric has, this is going to help us. So I'm hoping that we'll get started again here in a month at least. So let's hope. Okay. I know he meets with Jim on Wednesday uh, to kind of finalize how that process is going to work. But uh, I think he's looking at, when I talked to him today, he's looking at, he would possibly get the list and then just call and set up appointments himself. Okay. So let's hope that works. And uh, if somebody has any suggestions or anything, I'm sure it, uh, it will take them. But uh, uh, that's kind of where that's at right now. So obviously uh, we got some odd electrical stuff in as far as inventory. So we'll be working on that. Training is going good, as far as I know, there will be more potential uh, purchases on equipment that we have to upgrade on. It, it just uh, times out, so it has to be upgraded. And, uh, but that's all budgeted stuff, so that's kind of where that sits. Thank you, Paul. Is there anything else? Oh, just a uh, reminder that we have a, on the economic development side that we have a pool meeting next Monday night. And uh, everybody, I sure hope everybody can stop by and, and listen to it but, uh, and give input if they would at 6 o'clock at the uh, Hillsboro Elementary lunchroom. So just kind of put that out there. It's pretty important, pretty important economic development piece. So. Uh, the only thing I have is uh, we're probably going to be with this thawing and water standing all over and freezing, and I think we're going to be looking at a lot of a lot more potholes and patchwork this summer than what we've been doing in the past. Just driving around, I see a lot of loose asphalt more than we usually have. So, so don't be expected if the city crew or a gym comes up and requests more money for. Yeah, so I was just going to say, yeah, so far. But, but that, ahead of ourselves. That's, that's my prediction anyway, that I think we're going to have a mass of potholes. We already have them, but it's just...
just and the, hard, the hard part is we got to deal with them twice because they're coming right. out. Yeah. Right. And normally we don't have them until April. Yeah. So then we got we got water pooling right now. Mm -hmm. So just off the cusp, does it make sense to maybe move the swales or things like that, and maybe more focus on some of the roads instead? I don't know how that works financially, but it, I mean, I've had some comments about the streets in Hillsborough too, and I, I agree. Um, just watching all the puddles everywhere else in other towns that they're getting pretty deep, and so I I worry about that. Yeah, you know, I don't know what the weather is going to bring if there's, you know, if they know where some of these drains are, if we can, you know, if we can try steaming some of them and they can do that, but I don't know if they want to do that now or... You wouldn't even think they'd be froze. No. Something's plugging them, so... Remember, it was cold there for a while. It's been warm for a long time, too. <laughs> But I like the one in front of Luthley's there. I noticed that one's open when I drove by there. But we could hear that. Yeah. Pretty good. And, mm -hmm. and that's probably something they should be looking at doing. If they're looking to rain on Thursday, Friday, they maybe should. <clears throat> I don't know how much they're talking about or just talking about. I don't think it's stuff. supposed to be. I think Wheeler said a half, half an inch, to maybe an inch of snow. That's all I have. The cold? Mm -hmm. Well, I have nothing. I have my wingman Steve here for that um, legislative thing. And if not, I would have my wingwoman Casey uh, back me up on that information. So I've got enough of that. Planning and zoning should have the finalize or hopefully finalize the ordinance on the storage containers this next meeting that was sent to them. We've made a comment on that about talking about uh, solar panels and windmills. I, th I think that's something that definitely has to be that, that we got to get into the building permit process that has to be done in my opinion. It wasn't that they needed a permit, it was what where were the, the what ordinances are we gonna have to govern what we could have. I think part of their concern was pulling out a large tower coming in and going in and then causing issues. So um, but yes, it was is that something we gotta address here with the ordinances or is that something that I think we'll talk more about it next Monday. Okay. So if I'm late to your meeting it's because we could Still talking about the planning and zoning, but um, I'd be more worried about a big windmill than I would a solar panel. But right. I suppose it's a placement thing too. Uh, right. Um, the solar panels and the electrical side as far as the grid. Yeah. You know, they both are, but the uh, windmills more cosmetic probably. Yeah. But it is more uh, ordinance side. It wasn't. Yes, if somebody's doing it, it is required that they should have a building permit. That isn't the case. Um, but they're, excuse me, moving forward on a lot of that stuff. Um, on a good note, I did hear that our new speakers, our, our new microphones have shipped. So hopefully we have them by the next wow. meeting. Like Only about a year. <laughs> uh, also tomorrow you should see our new sign going in. In Caledonia, that's supposed to be going in tomorrow, and then um, the ladies will get some training on using it at some point. Are you excited? Didn't you see that excitement on her face? I didn't know who she wanted eyes. I smiled. I smiled real good. She smiled. She smiled. Sarah's excited. Sarah's super excited. Casey doesn't know about it because uh, we haven't had time to talk about it, um, but we did work on the outage issues and the phone calls. Um, we did get it, I did get it figured out. Um, awesome. Basically, we'll have to do some trials. Um, 
there was one issue that came up today. But basically, when somebody calls into the office, it'll come up with an automated auto attendant that says press one or two. One would be going to this, one would go to an, an outage, and then that would be transferred over to the public works side of it, which, um, which is the grasshopper app that we use, which when somebody calls in, if you don't know what it is, it goes down the calling tree list or it'll blast it out to all of them so that um, they all get called at the same time on their phones. The only thing that the office would have to do when there is an outage that they'd go in and change the greeting on it that says that you know that there's a, a known issue, you can leave a message, or if you believe this is a new issue, um, check social media or website, those types of things. So we're just... And, that, and that's on what number then? The emergency number? Or what it number would be, they call? They'd call in either on the emergency number or the, lo or the local city office number. Both so how does that work when they call the city office number? Just like this. So when, so they I'll, I'll it. run it through you, Paul. Okay. Well, I'm just curious because how they would answer the phone, so. That'll make it easier. Like I said, the grasshopper one isn't working quite yet, but the rest would. You have reached the city of Hillsborough outside of business hours. To leave a message, please press 1 or press 2 to report a utility outage. And then they would hit 2 or 1. It also will set in the time so that the phones aren't ringing if on Wednesdays they're out of the office. It would go to voice. It would give this type of greeting or if it's outside of the time. So it was a feature that we already had in there. It just needed to be added in and turned on. Um, Sarah and I went through it a little bit and Keith and Abby. Um, and so I haven't... It probably won't be implemented for a little bit until they get used to doing it, but that's the gist of it, Paul, is it. But how does that help when they're in the office? When they're in the office, this message would come up the same. It's the same exact, very similar message. One to get in, get to Abby, or two to report an outage. Do they have to change that then? No, nope. it'll be all automated. Anytime somebody would call in, and say, because this, is, this is an evening call, so it's saying the outside of business hours. Right. During the day, it would say one to reach the operator okay. or two to reach uh, that there's an outage. Okay. Granted, people could go around that and still call in, but it would put them on hold or it would, you know, it can send up to voicemail instead of if they're already on the line, those types of things. So. There's also features where if we wanted that when they call in it can dial exactly and they get Casey right away instead of working through Abby. So some of the things that we'll work through, but it is um, Sarah and Abby seem to be it seemed like it would be something that would work for them. So I just gotta sit down with Casey and go through it. Um, something else. JR. Casey. I'm going to use this one because. Oh. oh, I remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> one, I asked Casey to call Halstead tomorrow and check on our internet over on this side of the building and see what we need to do. Um, and then the other thing I was asking if we can get millers or some of the electricians to come in and get that coffee maker wired in so that it could be used. Wire in over there. It's been sitting there for a couple of years. I'm 
sure the HBA would like it for their pen. This building, is this building here out there with its own internet? No, I think it comes from over from the office. From the office. But it's something must be not working quite right. I know over the weekend we were having issues, and I'm just, you guys probably all know this, but we, we, we just couldn't hardly get anything, and I just went down and just pulled the plug on everything, and 10 minutes later I plugged it all in, and everything came back. Just perfect. Um, you hearing me? No, at home. Oh, at home. Yeah. Which we try to reboot here, and uh, it, it helped for a bit. I, I figured you guys did. But I, so, if we're going to keep going with this, I think we need whether we need to hardwire it over so that at least this has internet all the time or something. So. Um, I don't have a lot to report. Um, the only thing that I was going to ask you guys about to see if I need to go in a new direction or not were two of those goals on my contract. Um, the first one, I don't know if everybody got a chance to read my email from over the weekend, um, but I discussed uh, the purchase order process and implementation. That was one of the tasks. Um, and then an effective plan to balance the accounts of the city. Um, the purchase order one is the big one that I wanted to discuss with you guys. Um, simply because you have a great procurement policy. Um, the biggest thing is just following it and enforcing following it. Um, it, it basically mimics a, pol a purchase order, in my opinion. You have the steps laid out nicely. And just to help with that, I created a flowchart just to make it even more transparent for city staff to see when they need permission to make purchases. Um, in addition to that, I think it would be beneficial to have um, some sort of a sign-off, um, whether it's verbal, text, um, something actually physically documented would be kind of nice because then there's no gray area. Um, but yeah, that, that was my big one that I really wanted to discuss with you guys tonight is what are your feelings, good, bad, or indifferent, on continuing with a purchase order with a PO policy. Um, we're happy to do it, but I do think it would be nice to, in the event that the commission would want to go forward and do it, um, I would like to see it implemented with our um, accounting software. Um, I don't feel we need it, but if we were to do it, that's the route I would appreciate going. Do we have a set limit on the purchase we, we, we do. need? What's the amount for? It's a thousand outside of budgeted items. I'll see if I can get my flow chart pulled up and I'll pull it. Okay, yep, yeah, here we go. Here we go. So if you look up, oh shoot, it's the internet broke. Um, <laughs> you can do it again. You can do it again? Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's the theme. Uh, here we go. It's, it's thinking, so hopefully it'll get up. So just a, a quick question for, for you, because this might coincide, I don't know. Um, I, this is an invoice that I absolutely love because it gives the account number, the date, terms, due date, but then it says PO number and then who it was ordered by. That PO number, I don't know where they got this from, but it does say WTP, which is water, water. plant. WTP is yeah, water plant. So, yeah. and I, they use numbers after it. I don't know where they got the numbers from, and that's what I'm asking you if that's kind of what you're looking for for those numbers to coincide with your counting, right? Typically, yeah. Yep, some sort of, uh, I know, I, I believe Abby's talked with uh, Public Works about just having them put any sort of indication on an invoice to state where it's supposed to come out of. Yeah. Um, and that works for us. That's okay. As long as that's on an invoice, we're okay with it. It's just following, you know, I, I know there's been discussion of um, invoices coming in that you guys haven't gotten to see um, prior to a meeting, and it's kind of a surprise when those come up during a meeting. Um, 
So, yeah, so that's where I thought if there was just a little bit more enforcement of what your actual procurement policy is, you know, I don't see the necessity for a purchase order policy. I don't know so. if we needed a purchase order policy as much as how do you, we implement this, but how do you, if there's water, uh, something for the water treatment plants need to be ordered. So how does, what's the procedure, which it kind of says in there, but it's not, how does Jim say to Nicole that this is what needed purchase and she's, how do you then transfer that she gives the okay to the office to say that this has been okayed? So it could even just be a sheet of paper. It could be a text. It could be an email. It's just yep. But how, and it doesn't necessarily have to be numbers. It's just so that you can match that bill up with well, you know with the, the approval. To take it. Right. And you know what account to take right. it out of. Mm -hmm. Plus, it would be. Wouldn't there be a lot of them? Think wouldn't there be an inventory thing too? No. Mm -hmm. But maybe I'm just. Yeah, it would tie in with that. Yep. Yep. And, um, it especially lines up like with audits and stuff because now you can line up your POs with those jobs and it goes into the account so it all does this match across. But I, I like I don't know who who told them this PO number, but I like that they put WPT or WTP. Yeah. Yep. And it could be that's all it is. And then mm -hmm. just Because so I knew that's what I was like, good, it's mine, I know it. Yep. And she'll know how to right. account it. But it's the process of how to if it's electrical things, how does the approval comes from Paul for the purchase? How does it go to the office? How do we? That's the. I don't know how you. It's the communication it's piece. The, it's the communication yep. piece. Whether it is an app, whether we use Teams, or whether it's a text message, whether it's whatever. Mm -hmm. As long as you are X amount, ten thousand dollars from. Hawkins for chemicals goes to Nicole and Nicole says yes and then she sends it back. But I don't want to I didn't want it to be where we said it's all going to be email and then not everybody has access to their email or however we're going to make it work. So which makes it easier for everybody. That's where I thought it would be best that you figure out what's going to work best for you guys. Okay. That was my opinion on it. Well I, like I told her I said two things. I want to know who who uh, made the purchase. Like, so if I have a question on, I know who to go talk to. And I said, secondly, I want, I want to, you know, some of these invoices are ridiculously basic. I mean, you know, heck, I couldn't, you know, they could put, they could do whatever they wanted. They're just throwing a number on there. And uh, I'm going to try it at the shop and see if I can buy with it. But uh, that <laughs> won't fly very long. But uh, I just, uh, you know, I, I just want to know. And then, because the part of the thing on the electrical side is, is like, for example, RS Electric, they may do something for the electrical barn, but they also may do something for the water plant. Well, if it's not, you know, clear, you know, and they're going through it quick, well, this is RS Electric. They might not catch what it's used for, uh, and it's important to make sure that, that that invoice is noted, because I still think this there's one invoice in here, for example, on the boring. I think part of that was used for what? Well, you know, because they didn't do a good job of breaking out on the invoice, how do I know how much of it was water and how much of it was liquid. And I could be wrong on that, but I thought they did a little bit of both. So. And then another question I had too is, uh, this is a budget item. Well, you know, I have got so much in electrical, but what exactly is, but you know, we didn't itemize things that are budgeted, what projects are budgeted and what aren't. So. And that's we, something we have to work on. Right, exactly. And the next, yeah. the next budget is to say, yeah. and it doesn't have to be specific, it could be, if it's streets, we're doing First Avenue Northeast to Second Street Northeast. And that's a one project, and then there's another project. And you put, maybe it's $10,000, but it's in there as a line item and budgeted that this is what we're going to do. To me, I would look at it like when I have the, when we have the list of all things we've got to do. This is for the reclosures. We're budgeting X amount for this. This is for, in, this is for inventory for... For transformers, whatever these are, these are things that we budgeted for. Now I know that yeah, that transformer, you know, was budgeted and, and it's, you know, it just needs my approval. Whereas, what if it's something that wasn't budgeted? Let's say we just wanted to, you know, stock one. Well, is that something then, 
you know, where, where does the line draw between, you know, stalking one and when I need to have permission versus just saying, yeah, go ahead and, and get this. That's just an example. I don't well, you know how it works in, in the other departments, but. I think it also helps too because if you're making purchases and it's the same thing over and over again, you kind of wonder, like, okay, what's the issue? Like, are we spending money on stuff that's constantly breaking and how do we overcome that? Otherwise, I, I wouldn't know. Like, if you put you change something at a lift station, I don't know what lift station that is. So I don't know how many times we have an issue at that lift station. Mm -hmm. Well, and that helps when we when we need to do the true ups for East Central and the water treatment plant, or when we do a lot of other projects. I think it'll help. Overall, it's going to take a little bit of work in the beginning, but in the end, it's going to help the ladies in the office. Because to me, too, on the electrical side, is this for a project or is it for a restock? Is it inventory? You know, so if it is something that's it's inventory or, or, or it's going to be inventoried, well, then do we know when it's, how do we know when it's used? If we don't figure out a way to keep track of that. And if it's an emergency outage, it's, it doesn't say that, no, you can't go buy it. It just, it's a little different. And it's just, well, it's just a little different subject on the inventory side. How would you, how do you handle that type of thing? And I'm not talking, like I told her, I'm not talking nuts and bolts. I'm talking a $10,000 transformer that we bought a year ago for stock, well now, how do I know that we have that in stock? Right. Mm -hmm. you know, so we need to, are there, is there things that we need to inventory so that I know that when, when he says, well, we need a five, five, we need a five by five transfer, and I'll say, well, what about these other five? Where did they go? Well, and it probably helps more for the budget too. So right. we're not, you know, mm -hmm. overshooting or undershooting or whatever the, the issue may be. Well, an expression is day and age where things take so long to get. We want to be on, you know, we start getting down to one or two or three or wherever it might be, you know, we got to be looking at the next year budgeting to make sure that we keep what we want on hand. You know, and, uh, Does that kind of help you, Casey, how to move forward? Yeah. I'll come up with a game plan. And okay. I got it. <laughs> Anything else? Yep. The only other one was um, I proposed kind of a tentative plan to stay on top of uh, keeping the city accounts balanced. Um, and that's just by going through and doing quarterly reports um, and utilizing those little bit more detailed budget control reports that Banyan produces. Um, so doing a quarterly review, utilizing those reports, um, creating a higher detailed expense report, um, kind of like what Paul was talking about. I'm, I am, appreciate having a little bit more detail too. It just, it helps me budget moving forward, seeing what each department spends in certain areas. So that's just what I like too. So um, I know Paula and I are on that same page. Um, and I will say that financial statement that you've been giving out is a lot more, a lot more detail, a lot more information. I extremely like it. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, um, the only thing I was gonna mention, and this is just here, there, but Maybe on the fire department side, we need to make a separate budget line item for them too, as well. Yep. Or uh, fund or something. There is a so their dollars are under the general fund, and then they have their own account with um, individualized um, object lines. Okay. So it, it is broken out, but it might be beneficial to reevaluate those numbers for the 25 budget and make sure that everything's covered, so no overspending happens. Because when I looked at it before, it was just basically just one line item mm -hmm. before where it's not broken out. Mm -hmm. so we're not seeing everything all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's it's further broken out as of right now, and, and we can add to it if you guys would like to. So, um, and then budget season, um, we're already putting together the uh, budget for 25, getting the main spreadsheet created for it. Um, but I'll be handing out sheets to you guys in June, um, as well as to Public Works, just to make sure that I'm on the same page or if we need to amend anything, you know, and get it, get it going a lot earlier. So that's my current proposal for staying on top of the accounts. Um, you know, typically I haven't, I haven't done quarterly reports, but I think for you guys, you may find it a little bit more beneficial just to notice if things need to be amended, you know, each quarter and see if you do need to change 
uh, budgeted items. So, any likes, dislikes, indifferences? I like it. I like it. Oh, I think you're doing a good job. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, we won't go through any of the beautification tickets tonight. There were haven't been any changes on those. I'm still working on those with the beautification. Uh, and I'm guessing we won't have a meeting this month based on that there's another meeting at the same time. Next, we'll go into old business on the cleaning company discussion, uh, and they were requesting additional pay. With that's with the Leashes Cleaning Service. Ab, um, did we ever get a quote from the other lady in town as far as what she would do, or just that she just by hour uh, she was willing to do it? No quote, um, but she. There we go. Uh, no quote yet. Um, I needed to talk with Sarah and Abby to ensure that we had everything kind of covered. The only um, the only small um, uh, small thing with her is she can only work during the school hours. Um, she can't work after school hours or on weekends. Um, I requested that Mondays, you know, if Mondays could work after events are done, um, that that would probably work out best. I thought for your guys's meetings and. At that time, she was pretty sure she could make that work. What were the pictures you sent us? I mean, I was kind of confused. What were they uh, supposed to be representing? I asked her for pictures. Um, the The biggest complaints that, in I'll double check with Abby and Sarah. They've been um, discussing with this cleaning service a little longer than I have. Um, but the main complaints about the cleaning, especially over here at the community center, is that the floors um, don't routinely get swept after events. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can pull them up. Um, that was one of the big complaints. Um, and that vacuuming happens. Um, I had asked Alicia for a copy of the contract if the city had one with her. She relayed that we do not have a contract. Um, I'm just going to kind of go back through my email here quick. I didn't sign a contract that I'm aware of. It's been almost a year. Um, so then I just uh, discussed with her via email the services that are to be done. Um, based on what the invoices say each month. Um, on the invoice, it states all facilities will be cleaned, dusted, garbage emptied, wiped down, and floors vacuumed slash mopped. Um, and that's been about the same message on all invoices from the time that you guys started with Alicia's cleaning service. Um, and I, I guess based on that, I would have just assumed that those services should be being done. Um, but they, uh, the, the argument is that it's excessive over here after events. Um, oh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on getting those pulled up for are you. These pictures after they cleaned, before they cleaned, or what are these pictures? Both. Both. Yes. I don't really see. I'm not seeing her shattering any of them, but. Uh, so what are there? So let's say I rent this place. <laughs> Just refresh my memory. If I rented this place, what are, what is my responsibilities after my event? You're expected to clean up and stack the chairs and put the tables away. Or is that posted someplace? I'm not sure if it's posted in the kitchen. I'm sure, JR has the contract, but I think it was. You're supposed to leave it basically the way that it was. You came into it. Sweep, mop, vacuum if you need to. I think we should laminate a list so people can look at it in the back of the kitchen or someplace so they know that before they leave and put it on the door or whatever mm -hmm. so they know that this is where this is, you know, or this what is expected of you when you rent. Mm -hmm. And if they don't call, and if they don't complete those things, that they're depositing what they get. Well, and I think, what is our deposit? 50? Uh, no. Um, rentals 50, deposits 200, I think, for here. Not for here. I don't think, 
we'll have to look at the rate sheet. I, I, I believe the deposit's more than the rental for here. Well, I was kind of getting the, I thought maybe the pictures that were of somebody had an event or, and that's where the, that they left it. That's what I was taking, but maybe I'm misunderstood on that. Well, apparently it was after some event, but something. I guess I didn't think they were horrible compared to... Yeah, I didn't see anything that jumped out to me that was... I think, <laughs> I think we explore with the, our local one and seeing what she would charge per hour and um, kind of go from there. If you guys are okay with that, and ladies. I'd be okay with that. I, I agree with Paul. some kind of a... Right, I think that means that, 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 that things that should be done when you after you rent the place. I think that that's true too. That we just need to do a better job of and make sure we have all the equipment that they need. Well, that list should be given when they when they rent it. They should be given a copy of that, and it should also be posted. Here. I. I think they do sign off on that when they sign the rental agreement, I think. Okay. Um, Just clarify that to make sure. Yes, you bet. Because that would be a sample of what they put up here. Mm-hmm. JR, did you have a rental agreement for that? I'm working on it. Okay. I can't get my... It's on the city website, but that's the... I can't get my internet to work oh, either. Like even the armory had, it almost like a specification of sweeping, mopping. It, the armory does. Yeah. Well, when the fire department rents that for their sportsman's banquets, yeah. they usually collapse all the tables, yeah. storage, chairs, chairs sweep it down. Yeah. Well, that's changed for years. I know when Ray was in there, he did a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah now you have to use it yourself or you don't get your deposit back. So wouldn't the rental agreements be kind of, the rental agreement for there be kind of similar to this, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, to quote the agreement as it's listed on the city website, less he shall clean, sweep, mop, take out coverage, and take coverage to dumpster, put away tables and chairs before the expiration of the lease. So at the end of their event. And it's a hundred dollar deposit. Correct. Who in the city office checks that one after they rent? Abby typically does. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and in my time here, we've kept one deposit. Um, I came over and took pictures. And I, you know, it's kind of up to interpretation, but I didn't feel that the cleaning was outside of what was stated would be done on the invoice. So... It was sweeping, mopping, vacuuming, you know, and doing the bathrooms. So I, I didn't, we didn't notice, I mean, there wasn't massive amounts of garbage laying everywhere or anything like that. It was things that were stated in the invoice memo. So. So we have, in the rental agreement, we have certain things need to be cleaned and then we have certain things that need to be cleaned. What on top of somebody were to do what's in the agreement? What it's supposed to be is cleaning up after, like, after commission meetings, we're not expecting our staff to go do it. Or if there was an event and somebody didn't clean it, then that deposit should be paid for if somebody didn't do it, is what it's meant to be. It's like, does the cleaner get called to come over and do it, or do they automatically just come over and check, or...? They do come over automatically. So they do the city office on Saturdays. Okay. Um, and I assume that they do this building the same day. That's my assumption. Which I assume that even if the other person did it during daytime hours, it wouldn't be a big deal to work it around. So, no. Which would be better off than you wouldn't have to give out keys and everything else. Yep, because what they do over at City Hall is they just do the bathroom and the hallway. Um, and then here it's the bathrooms, um, bathrooms, the main commission room. On an older invoice, it had the bathrooms, the commission room, office, um, the kitchen. It had everything really 
laid out on an older invoice. And then something changed between uh, doing the services for the armory. So then the payment was updated from 500 a month to 300 a month, I think. Um, and it got a little updated after that. And then I think we got less services. So, because they also used to do. Um, Public works too to help out. So if they do the office yep. and they find out they don't have to clean here, are they still charging the same amount? Yes. Oh. It's the same every month. Oh. At least what I've seen. It is, yeah. That's where maybe by the hour, if the other one would be more willing. Did she say how much per hour, or she didn't? She didn't relay that. No. Okay. No, but I will make a note to check in with her. So was the request an additional pay because they have to come and clean more because of they think that they're going to get cleaned after events? Or? That's what they're saying. Yes. Let's put it on the agenda for next meeting and then try to get a price from um, I can't remember the name of the company. Yeah, I think we have to do more stress to it. And then put more forth to. I mean, we do. I think we do have cleaning place. companies in town. You can always go out a bit now. And then make sure we get a list put together of what needs to be done and put over there. And maybe it's a checklist they need to bring back, and they say they did, for them to get their deposit back. That would be fine. That would work. So yeah, that you guys that figured out. Priorities. Okay. <laughs> Well, if you come in, if you come in when you're done, you're going to check it when they come to get their deposit. Or if you haven't checked it, you come and do it. I thought that one that event happened, I guess, if anything has happened. Because the hard part, I suppose, if something goes on Friday and then you're not around Friday night, then something goes on Saturday or something goes on Sunday. Well, who's. But if who's you, who, you brought up a really good point because yeah. that has happened. That happened. Um, Oh, it was just before Christmas. Somebody had an event in here on a Friday night, and I think it was Leif that was discussing this um, during one of the planning and zoning or beautification meetings. Um, he said, you got to keep the deposit from the night before. We cleaned up lettuce like crazy, he said, mm -hmm. you know, from a party that was just in there prior. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what do we do in that instance? I don't, personally, I don't. If they cleaned, I think, then they get the deposit. If yep. the next group came in and had to clean up, and they can prove it, so say that you need to take pictures and say that this is what we did, then they can get their, that deposit, because they did the cleaning. I don't want to... I if that was... Pretty soon we're gonna have the guys in the back falling asleep, so we better keep moving on. Charles, is that? And I think we need to look at that as well. <laughs> yeah. so, um, the next day. I'm not realizing how tough we got after <laughs> You don't have to be here. We do. <laughs> Your ratings are declining. <laughs> Well, it's not. I don't think it's working anymore. So. <laughs> it's the internet. Um, it's probably off and on. Yeah, I think so. The delinquent bill policy what, and energy assistance. What I had told Casey back about that, if I think I did, was um, if somebody is on energy assistance, they still need to keep up current with it, their portion of it. At any point, they don't then it should be shut off. Okay. Perfect. And as long as there's paperwork saying they've submitted it or they're working on it or the, for that, the part that isn't their responsibility, as long as you guys know that they're... Okay. Otherwise, they need to go on a payment plan. Okay. Does that seem fair? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the Starry and Bank rate letter. What was they about? Which one? New business. 
Oh, yep, city minutes oh, publication. Every four years, cities have the option to put it on the ballot to have their meeting minutes published in the newspaper um, or, you know, have it put up to a vote. So the question I'm putting to you guys is, is do you want it put on the ballot to ask the public if they want to continue putting the meeting minutes in the newspaper? I would say yes. I saw Put it on the ballot. That's my opinion. I would say yes. It's been on the ballot before, right? Yep. I believe so. Yep. Is yes. that a motion, Dave? Yes, I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Nicole. Any further discussion? Anything on the ballot? <laughs> Paul? Yes. Jason? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Dave? Yes. And a yes for me. Motion carries. Okay. Sorry, I missed that. Dave. Uh, Starian Bank letter rate proposal. That was for what they could do for us. Yes. Um, so they called prior to me going on vacation. Um, and this, the uh, proposal in the packet is what they are willing to do. 4.75% um, variable rate. Um, I went and talked with the uh, with Goose River today, um, and they would really appreciate coming to the next meeting um, to discuss the pros of staying local um, and where there could be some issues going with this option through Starion. So, um, I would agree that if uh, Bob or somebody from Goose River wants to come, that. Bob was the intended one. He's on vacation this week, so he couldn't come this week. I'd like to see it stay local. Mm -hmm. so, okay. So let's, uh, before we do anything on that, we'll have Goose River come and um, we do benefit Born Heritage as well. And we'll think. come as well. You can reach out to them. Um, the next item is the 1881 extraction request. Um, that's just approval for us to sign off on those documents. Their GR had to take a look at it. It was something that should have been done previously, somehow it got missed. And so I didn't want to officially do it and sign off on it unless you guys approved it. I but guess I don't understand what it is. I don't understand it either. I don't, that's not how I saw it. So I don't know what to I didn't well, either. I, I was going to defer to JR on that. So I've seen the code of conduct form, which is the one I thought was an email that we didn't sign off on. Correct. Is there other forms we signed off on? Four of them. Well, so there's three. So there's three forms okay. to sign off I, on. I and didn't then see those in the meeting before this, but I don't remember those being the email from whomever it was. That was a, yeah, the code of conduct one was a while ago, um, yeah, but yeah. then Mitch sent a thicker email. I will know I did not see the thicker email. I saw the code of conduct, which... That one's a rubber stamp by us. We ready to do that. Okay. As to these other two, I haven't reviewed them. Or three. I guess I'm not sure your number now. Okay. Yep. So we can sign off on the code of conduct. That one's, like, yeah. And then we'll have GR review the other ones, if that's okay with you. I didn't realize there was more either. I thought it was just the one. Right. Oh. And as to the code of conduct, it just says that you're not going to do any self dealing and you're going to work with the safety views we're imposed as city officials. Because I look at that one about the progress report number seven. Exactly. Yeah, that's just doesn't make. Mean, it's almost like I don't have to get anything on your payments. Or I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Yeah. So this was all in the packet together. Two of them are a progress report, which we've signed off on before. The one that I question is on that number three there on that. It says the only feasible option would be to forgive the CDLF loan. 
you know, also request the uh, HUD cancel the project in light of the fact that job creation required us requirements cannot be met. I got up there now. Oh, I didn't see that. I think we just table it until Gerard has a chance to look at it. Yeah. Speed reading there. I am speed reading, but yes, I prefer the time. Thank you. <laughs> we'll just do everything off on it. And then, Casey, can you find out how much money we've actually stuck into this so far? Sure. Just in case there is. Okay. Uh, we'll do the easy one first. We'll go to the tap that liquor license transfer. Is there a second? Second. Moved by Nicole, seconded by Dave. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Wondering about that. All right. Uh, the last item. Before we go into the public works superintendent position. There was another item that I forgot about. All of us received the email from about the um, trailer park, which I did forward on to JR and, and talk to him about it. As it seems like it, it could lead to litigation, if you, they do come to the next meeting, we could go into executive session so that we can confer with council on that, if you would prefer. Um, I did, I don't know if you've seen, I did respond back to him that if they would like to come to the next meeting, that would be the time, because I knew there was a lot on our plate tonight, so. Yeah, okay so if they do ask um, to be put on the agenda, or they do show up, I don't know how you would want to word it, that we, that there could be an executive session for that. item for tonight is the Public Works Superintendent position. I did put a job description together. Do not, this is not by any means, God, this is what it needs to be. This is just a draft so that we have a starting point. I tried, to, I had asked Casey, or didn't ask, I asked um, the ladies to find if there was a position listed before, they couldn't find anything. So Sarah could not find anything in her stuff. And so um, this was taken off of a few different ones. Um, like I said, I won't feel bad on it. Everybody had seen the email, I assume, as far as from Jim that um, basically Jim is going out on medical leave starting Thursday, the way it sounds. And then he will be out pretty much till the rest of the year using most of his time up and then should be done retiring in June. And Jim's been with us for 29 years. So um, I don't know that we need to make a decision on this tonight. But this is a starting point for you guys to add, change, put in what you want in the job description. Um, same thing with the pay. It could be anything. It's going to be very variable. Um, I think, like, salary ranges. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I'm not too much of, like, a cap person. Can we put maybe, like... The base plus and then DOE in parentheses because it could be anywhere from here to there, and I don't want to give impressions that it's this capped. I well, maybe we put 120,000 plus. I just don't want it to. What I've heard of people saying if you put 60,000 plus, well, they think it's going to be right around 60,000. There's not a, a range. Hmm. That's just what I've you know. We may get glanced over because it's, oh, they're only going to pay 60000 plus. Well, is that 60000 and 
67 thousand or is it right not everybody alone. that was my thought on it that's why I did it I don't know how did Casey what did when you looked at it before it was 60 to 120 so did you think it was going to be if you would have seen 60 would have been closer to 60 or would you think what would you think I mean that's a tough question <laughs> um, my, my situation was maybe a little different but you know 60 was more than what I was making at my old job right. so that's kind of <laughs> what I'm thinking. now you're telling <laughs> <laughs> you could have asked for a public record <laughs> chance to review this but I think one of the questions to our discussion points is um, you know what this role maybe looked like but would look like you know do we talk about anything else like linemen or any other type of experience that we are looking for or a base of what we want to see kind of like minimum requirements preferred I see that on here right um, what? So I, I don't know how you guys feel about that or if it's even... My hope eventually over time when we can get there is that I don't know that we're, we're going to find that one person that's going to do everything. If we can find somebody that does electrical and water and um, advantage, that'd be really great. I just don't know that we're going to get there. I think we've started working on that we have... Brian going to school to be in alignment, which is helping. We have Jay and Zach that are working on their water treatment. Um, and I think Jay got a lot in his solid works, or the waste side of it. So we have guys that are filling into these positions, and hopefully either Zach or Jay, if they get their level three, then one of them could be the main person that oversees the water treatment plant. If we hire a lineman, we have somebody that oversees the electrical side of it. And hopefully then they realize that they may have to push snow once in a while or run a backhoe or do some of those things. Um, I think a lineman will be hard. Right. Um, but then if we hire more of a manager side to help get everything back in the line. I think that should be our key priority. And I know John is looking at retiring in the next little while. So when we get to that position is then we look for a, more of a alignment type if that's the direction we're gonna go. Or it could be Brian is taking over and understanding it more so he does more of the right. So I mean, I, I'd love to see that we could find a lineman slash supervisor. I don't know if we'll find it. We can advertise it and put it in as part of that, but and I you think can find a lineman. Will they have any interest in water and sewer and streets right. and things like that? So now you're looking at. You know, I, I think the, the reality is, is if you're going to cover these areas well, it's going to take more than more, more than one person. Right, and that's where you start with a good overseer that can manage and do the things and learn a little bit over time to get some of those things. Well, the dad, you know, the, the top two there are the three, I guess, you know, uh, department oversight and budget management, mean, to me, that's that's a big a big mm -hmm. thing. You know, we want, we got, we got to have somebody, we got to figure out how we're going to have oversight on all the departments, make sure that what's supposed to be done is being done, Re reports that are supposed to be filed are going to be filed and, and all that thing, and what needs to be done, you have to have person that's, you know, and of course, you got, you know, to me, all these top ones are more of a, of a supervisory position, and how hands-on would they be, you know, so, as far as whether it be getting in a plow or a backhoe or crawling up a pole or whatever it might be, that particular person, I don't And I think it's gotten to be cut, and I think it's in, you can correct the case, but I'm guessing it's it's gotten to be a little bit more complicated with the states sending down, hey, I need this, I need this, I need this, and now I compare it to teachers who 
are spending more time doing paperwork than they're teaching the kids. Well, the same way here, you guys are probably filling out more paperwork than you're trying to get other stuff. So, at least especially for shop side of right? Yeah. Um, I don't know if this helps at all. Well, thank you. I don't know if this helps out at all, but um, in the, you know, from now until whenever Jim does choose to retire, um, he and I have talked about having the office do more reporting. Right. It sounds like quite a few of the reports used to be done in the city office, and I'm not opposed to that. I think kind of being in the loop on some of that stuff makes a good, you know, communication loop for for our departments. So, so that might help ease a little bit of of that concern, I guess. I, I still need to talk to Jim. It won't be for a while, but but that might help out a little bit. I, um, my opinion, I think a small that small autonomous is, and they don't have a big crew. We should get somebody that at least can fill in if if there is a snowstorm, and, you know, that can run a plow or a truck, and but not take away from his duties. You know, paperwork's a big thing. You know, but. and planning and the things that we need, whether it's uh, you know working on the low control systems and getting that stuff lined up. There's a lot of that. So um, I think, you know, training somebody to run a truck is going to be a little bit easier, but they have, we, that may be something that we need to put in here. Mm -hmm. So make sure. My hope is that we could open this up by March 1st at the latest. So, Um, I think it says August, but that was because it wasn't changed. And the starting date, hopefully we could get them in there by May 1 at the latest, too. Um, so please, uh, if you have any changes, send them to Casey or Abby or Sarah, or tell them so that they can make the changes on the document so that we can get it in by, let's say, the... The 15th next um, Thursday. And that's feedback to Casey and Sarah, you said? Yep, so that mm -hmm. these can get added in, any of the feedback can go in. That way they can compile it and make sure it gets out on Friday for everybody to review. We'll have it posted before our next meeting. Yep. <clears throat> then I, I agree with Nicole a little bit on the salary portion right off the bat. And um, I think with that huge salary range, and I heard a lot of it with when we did the auditor, is basically somebody's going to come in and expect at least that minimum right. because we have such a huge gap. You know, Which we are at that with Jim currently. We're closer to 85. Mm -hmm. So then maybe we should shrink that gap or somehow... I, I just heard a lot of feedback with that. Or they see the top number and... I've done this for 10 years, I expect a top number. Right. And we could, like I said, this is not a, I just, I understand that and the point of, you know. Yeah, I, I just figured if, if we're trying to get it in before that, maybe, especially the salary, we should narrow down tonight. And maybe a little bit of the other add-ins or whatever, you know, we can do throughout emailing and right. try Because I think it's something that we should all discuss. Do you guys want 60000 plus, or do you want it a range? I'm not going to feel offended either way. I'm just stating my points. I've well, just now seen it with the, the plus and the de depending on experience, because then people at least know where their base is sitting, but know that it can be at least that and up. But if you look at the ceiling of it, then like you said, you get a really good candidate, but then they're like, well, I'm worth that 120 they might back and say, well, forget it then, and it kind of leaves you on the hook. Okay. So we should say 60,000 plus experience? What's the, what's like, say, the top guy right now below Jim? Yeah. Right. You know, because is it, do you want to raise that starting? Um, Possibly, so that there He's probably pretty close to around 60. I'd have to look. I There, there were a few, um, because you guys updated your policy manual. Um, those who had certifications 
got educational bumps. So I'd have to look. I'm not real sure right now. Um, so it's probably a good starting. I mean, it is just the base. So I think I don't think we have anybody over 30. I don't think so. And 30 would put you at 62.5 or 62.4. And those people have many, many years with the city. So. Mm -hmm. I'll, could I write it down on my to-do list and let you guys know, um, you know, per email or at your next meeting? Yeah. Okay. But it says you want it, whatever that number is, plus experience, not a range. Okay. <coughs> Anything else that you guys want to talk about? Not trying to hurry everybody along, but I know we don't have a clock here. I don't know, I know what Jim's kind of thing, when, when he's in and out of surgery, what, what he, I, I, like to, I really would like to see Jim at some point give some input into this. You know, I really would. I'd like him to, to, he can look at it and say, well, do what you want, or at least I think, I think he needs to have the opportunity to share what, what he thinks. You know, maybe could be changed to make things run better. Uh, but, you know, not, not that we have to agree or disagree. It's just that I think it's he's been here a long time, and he, he, I think he's got some knowledge he can share with us on how we could possibly do it to make this position run smoother. And whether or not he's able to do that, I don't know what he's having surgery for. Anything. I don't know what his recovery time is. If he maybe if he's recovering, he might be sitting around looking for something to do too. I don't know. I have no idea. Well, there might be components of his job that he never had along until he picked up along the way, and right, maybe right. things we don't know occur. Well, he might have things that, that you know you you really he, you really have to have somebody that knows this, this, and this. This isn't as quite as important, and uh, I, I just think it's good to keep him in the loop. And I, you know, then once he's gone through it, I wouldn't even mind seeing what John has to say. He's been here a long time. Too. Well, maybe can you take a copy of this down to Public Works? Mm -hmm. Tomorrow. Yep. And um, have them look at it. Everybody's okay with that and see if you can get one to Jim. Yep. For sure. And hopefully you can get one and give us feedback before he goes in. Does that tell him? Like, I, yeah, I think, I think he's got some time tomorrow. Maybe he might, but I don't, I don't know. But. And at the very latest, he can get back to before next Thursday. So that. Okay. Yep. Anything else? Does the degree, associate's degree, is that seen as a basic minimum qualifications or five to ten years of experience? associate degrees in electrical or bachelor's usually it's like apprentice journeyman master so that might be need to be rewarded like experience in electrical because you have to it's the same thing as alignment you have to put you have but, to work under for so long right but there is generally they some of them have a degree so. and it's not it says an associate's degree in those or five to ten years of experience. Yeah, because if they have five to ten years of experience, they're probably definitely a master at that point. But I don't know. My question was, is that what you want the minimum at? Or do you want more than that? Or Anything else for the good of the order? I have a motion to adjourn then. I'll make a motion. Is there a second? I'm seconding. By Dave, second by Paul. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion here.